Nick Vandekar here from Long & Foster Real Estate, selling the main line. One of the biggest questions I get asked is about buying a distressed property. There's three types of distressed properties. What most people have heard of and most common is probably the short sale. Even today, how long those take can vary dramatically. They are often not short. Uh, the term short comes from the verbiage that the seller ends up being short of funds to actually pay off their mortgage and therefore um, the sale is short of the necessary financing needed to remove the mortgage completely and it requires signing off by the mortgage company that they are willing to accept the lower payment. The next step of the process is the foreclosure process. This is a little more risky for first-time buyers, especially because you often don't get a chance to inspect the home and you are actually bidding at auction, usually the sheriff's auction, and the title that you get and the financing required is often cash. So usually not a method that many first-time home buyers would use to uh, purchase a home. And then finally you have what is called bank-owned properties. These are usually properties that have gone through the foreclosure process. They're now part of the inventory of the bank that owned the mortgage. And they are being put on the market following a uh, appraisal process that works out what the market value of the home is. So basically in our market today, because of uh, Pennsylvania's judicial uh, foreclosure process, there are a number of these bank owned properties that are coming through into the market at a steady rate. So there are opportunities for buyers to purchase these. The thing to remember is that they, um, as explained, go through a process of appraisal and then what happens is that the house is put on at what is termed to be a market value. Sometimes that can be a little below the market value if the market is moving upwards in price quickly. Sometimes it may be, because of the appraisal, a little high for market rises value. with many of these distressed properties is conditions of the home. Many have had copper piping removed, kitchens, um, the walls. So often they may have mold or other issues because um, ultimately the person who ended up being foreclosed on probably was short of funds and didn't maintain the home adequately during that process. So um, one of the issues that you need to be very aware of is the condition, which will lead on to an issue with financing because uh, the house may need repairs, may need um, things being done to it, so you probably would end up needing, as a first-time home buyer, unless you have a lot of cash handy, um, something like a 203 K loan which allows to borrow more money than you're actually paying for the house but that extra money is for doing repairs to the house. It's a special FHA uh, program and some banks don't want to take those sort of loans. They prefer to be dealing with an investor who's paying cash willing to take the house without doing inspections per se. So that is the other point that you're often in competition with investors people who may be uh, flipping houses for um, a living. And so you often, as a first time home buyer, cannot structure an offer that is acceptable to the bank in light of the other offers that they're probably receiving at the same time. There are alternatives to these distressed properties. Uh, there's often homes on the market that may be in a state, um, may need a little bit of work, may need um, something more in the line of sweat equity, something that you can actually handle and that you're not overwhelmed by. And many estate um, owners are willing to negotiate on price and be willing to look at a, a first time home buyer in a better light than maybe um, a bank would in a bank owned property situation. Hope this helps. We help many buyers along the main line, investors as well as first time home buyers. And uh, if you need help buying a home along the main line, feel free to give us a call.